There's three parts of open education I wanna talk about today. There's the dog. Open educational resources, open access to research, and open pedagogy. OER stands for Open Educational Resources. And basically, these are educational materials, textbooks or anything else, like videos or um, homework assignments, even your syllabus, uh, that carry an open license, usually from Creative Commons. And the open license is a special thing because it doesn't change your copyright or anything like that, but it allows people to use your material in the ways that you specify in the license. Um, most of the open licenses come with what we call the five R's, and I'm going to try, probably unsuccessfully, to name them right now. They are retain, and that means that uh, students or anybody else using your uh, stuff can retain that stuff forever, unlike a rental, they never have to give that material back. Um, reuse and redistribute, they can share those as much as they want for as long as they want. Revise and remix, um, which is really important because that allows us to get in there and customize these materials so that they're perfect for our courses and for our students. Um, reuse, redistribute, retain, revise, and remix. Those are the five R's of OER. Um, but I also want to tell you a couple other really cool things about open educational resources. Um, so the key with OER is that they drive down the cost of a college education. Um, this is really important because most people don't realize how much of a percentage the cost of books is compared with the cost of tuition. It's really high, especially at public and community colleges. Um, these costs, and actually all non-tuition costs, um, make up more than half of a student's actual cost of attending college. So when we change what we do with our learning material prices, we're changing much more than just the book cost for a course. We're changing the overall cost that they're paying for college. Uh, the other thing that's important to know about OER is that um, all perception studies, for the most part, show that faculty and students rate the quality of open educational resources as the same or better than those really expensive commercial textbooks. And the most exciting thing about open educational resources is that we now have, and Flying Dan's really excited about this in particular, we now have really good data um, from lots of studies that show that there's a positive correlation between student success and using OER. So throughput rates, which are how many students drop or withdraw from a course and what grades they get, Throughput rates all improve uh, when students use OER, and those improvements are most pronounced for learners from underserved uh, communities, Pell-eligible students and students of color in particular. So OER is kind of a no-brainer. When we can, we should be switching to no-cost, openly licensed resources. Next, I want to talk about open access to research. So if you publish something, um, it can be really hard for scholars around the world and especially for students or for people who are not affiliated with the university to access that work that you've done. Sometimes that makes sense, like if you um, write a creative book or a scholarly monograph and you want to get paid for your labor. Um, but sometimes it doesn't make sense because you're actually not getting paid for your labor. There's only a third party publisher getting paid. And beyond that, a lot of times what those scholarly publishers charge for your work is way too high for most people to afford, and even too high for lots of universities. Um, Plymouth State pays hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to fund the databases that carry your scholarly research, much of which was publicly funded by grants. Open access to research is a way for a uh, movement, really, for scholars to share their work more directly with the public um, in ways that don't necessarily impede with how much they get for their academic labor, but which takes out the middleman so that we eliminate the vast profits that certain private companies are taking off of scholarly research now. We have to find a sustainable funding model for publishing open access research. Sometimes you'll hear people kind of griping, saying, um, I don't want scholars to directly bear the burden of cost because sometimes open access models will charge scholars like a thousand or two thousand dollars to publish something. But here's the thing, like Plymouth State and other colleges pay so much money to for-profit publishers every year that instead we could repurpose just half of that money to cover all of the fees for our scholars who are publishing and we'd still have lots of money to return to students at the end. 
Open access is about figuring out the ecosystem that will allow us to more quickly share research, sometimes research that can be life-saving, um, so that everybody in the public, regardless of their ability to pay, has access to knowledge. And finally, I want to talk to you about open pedagogy. Open pedagogy is not just about access to knowledge, it's also about access to knowledge creation. So while OER lowers the cost of learning materials to make it possible for more students to come to the table to learn, we also want to think about the power of those five R's to involve our students in the creation and revision of the knowledge that they're learning. So open pedagogy, when we think about access to knowledge creation, it's about supporting assignments that put our, our students in conversation with their scholarly and professional communities. It's about letting them do work in our courses that can have an impact on our fields and in the world. The idea is that the new scholars that we're quote unquote training actually have so many things to teach us about the way we've been doing things all along. How can we listen and involve their voices in our fields and in our courses um, so that they really have a chance not just to graduate into a world prepared, but to graduate into a world that they've helped to shape. So COVID-19 has made everything feel a little bit uncertain and unstable, but during a public health crisis, it's nice to have a public education response. And that's really, to me, what open is. It's a way of putting the public good in the front of how we think about teaching and learning and the acquisition of knowledge um, and the sharing of knowledge. It's a sharing-oriented ecosystem so that academics can put access in the front of what we do. Thank you for your interest in doing this work, and I'll talk to you soon.